Hello, everybody. This is uh, Shackleton the Explorer, a very hungry Shackleton the Explorer. He's always hungry. And uh, I'm Paul Beckwith. Now, what I want to do is uh, I've often focused on trying to explain to you the different connections between the different climate systems. I call it, you know, instead of abrupt climate change, it's abrupt climate system change because the whole system is interconnected um, and uh, is all rapidly changing. So back in uh, June, we had a record dust storm. So the Sahara Desert is the largest source of dust on the planet. And sometimes in the summer, we get these large dust storms. And these dust storms are carried by the African uh, easterly jet all the way across the Atlantic Ocean to down to the Caribbean, and then they can circle up into the US. Okay, so this is a typically, um, this does happen, but in June, the conditions were such with the jet streams. Okay, the Arctic sea ice was so low that the jet streams were extremely um, distorted and uh, had slowed down and basically stalled in these uh, very persistent uh, blocking patterns. Okay, and what that did is it created a high pressure area, a ridge over Africa. Now the air circulates clockwise around a high pressure system. So that basically meshed as a gear with a low pressure system that was just south of that region, okay, and the air over the low pressure system, air comes in from outside and it deflects to the right in the northern hemisphere, so it goes counterclockwise along the low pressure. So you've got a low pressure like this, a high pressure like this, so in between is geared, and that creates the um, eastern, the, the African eastern jet. Now, it was super, super hot from the high pressure system, okay, um, and uh, the low pressure system, because the ground was so warm over Africa, the, uh, the, the convective uplift was thermal, thermally caused, was huge, bringing the dust up. So dust went up about six kilometers into this African easterly jet. And because of the unusual jet stream conditions, it uh, created the largest dust storm that we've ever seen Okay, in the satellite record, going from Africa across the Atlantic into the Caribbean and uh, North America. So I'm going to show exactly what happened. And a paper just came out recently talking about these effects and how it's all related to the, to the loss of, uh, oh, I'm sorry, to the loss of uh, Arctic sea ice. Okay, so... This uh, dust storm, not only was it the most massive that we've seen in terms of area covered, but it also had the highest uh, aerosol optical depth, or AOD. So, in other words, if we measure the amount of sunlight that um, gets through the dust and hits the earth, okay, the amount of, you can figure out this aerosol optical thickness is how thick the the dust aerosols are, how much blocking of sunlight there is, that also set a record by almost a factor of two over the previous aerosol optical depth. So I'll show you all of these data. It's, there's a paper like that just came out a couple of days ago, and it's by a Francis, but it's not Jennifer Francis. It's, uh, there's a Diana Francis, um, who's the principal author of, of this paper. So let me uh, go into the details here. So this, um, this dust storm is being coined the Godzilla dust storm. So 2020's Godzilla dust storm. And was it caused by the loss of the Arctic sea ice? Basically, the Arctic sea ice set up jet stream conditions such that uh, this storm was made much more likely. So let me play, I'm going to play a video first here. This is a short video, but let's just play it. OK, 
Okay, so you can see the dust being generated and coming across here. Clouds are white, the dust is the yellowish brownish color. So it's subtropical high, the air is moving this way, a low this way, and that gears and creates the African Eastern jet. The interesting thing is that this dust normally suppresses uh, hurricanes in the Atlantic Basin. But that didn't happen this year. We had record numbers of hurricanes, 30, 30, 30 named tropical storms. Okay, so the Arctic sea ice record losses were seen early in the summer and that contributed to the uh, conditions that were set up. Okay, so this is the article you can look, at, look for. Godzilla dust storm may have a connection to low Arctic sea ice. Okay, so it was just, uh, oh, my cat is caused wreaking havoc. So it was just, um, okay, it just came out a few days ago, um, uh, the discussion. So the, the monster dust storm, which, was, which scientists have been calling the Godzilla dust storm, because it's been the largest on record, on the satellite record, it stretched all the way across the Atlantic this past summer, and the origin may have a, not surprising to you, but a surprising to a lot of people. Not surprising to you because it it's, you know, requires a jet stream configuration to be a certain way, which is occurring because of the uh, extreme Arctic temperature amplification, which is occurring because the Arctic sea ice is setting you know, is, 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 is setting near record lows. And back in, you know, as I mentioned in previous videos, in the spring and early summer, the Arctic sea ice set records. It was, it was decreasing at faster rates than ever before. And it was only in the late, uh, in August and September when it slowed down and therefore it didn't set a new record. And I explained in a video how there's an atmospheric shift in the circulation patterns in the region and that's happened you know almost every year since 2012 and 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 that basically is the reason why we haven't set a new new uh sea ice minimum since then in terms of extent but of course the the um the thickness of the ice is setting record lows and the volume is continuing to set record lows but anyway what happened in late june of 2020 this immense dust storm crossed the atlantic from the sahara desert so in cities across Central America, the Caribbean, and North Carolina to the Texas coast, the skies turned dark as a thick layer of dust blotted out the sun. In all the record books, never has a Saharan dust storm matched either the size of this one or the thickness of the dust it carried with it. So that's why we're calling it the Godzilla dust storm. And uh, basically, once it had subsided, you know, researchers led by, so this is Diana Francis, of Khalifa University of Science and Technology in the United Arab Emirates. So this is not, don't mix her up with Jennifer Francis. That's easy to do. Okay, so this study was just published. Um, so basically there was a subtropical high off the coast of North Africa, and that combined with a low pressure circulation over West Africa. So that set up the gears. It set up, it put loads and loads of dust from the Sahara into the, um, African easterly jet and uh, created the dust storm, which then went for thousands of kilometers over to North America. So the development of the subtropical high had a deterministic role in both dust emissions and rapid westward transport of the airborne dust across the tropical Atlantic. The clockwise circulation associated with the high intensified the African easterly jet, which is a jet stream present over the Sahara about five kilometers in altitude, and that rapidly transported dust towards the Caribbean and the southern U.S. So here we have Africa. Clouds are white. Dust is yellow. We've got this subtropical high. So high, air moves outwards, deflects to the right in the northern hemisphere, so it creates these very strong winds in this direction. Meanwhile, we've got a... So this is associated with a jet stream ridge. Okay, then the jet stream comes all the way down here into this trough. And the, the, so we have a low pressure region here. Air moves in, deflects to the right. So the movement of the air is this, in this direction. So this direction here, so these are like two gears that are meshed. And the net, so this 
direction here pushes air this way, this direction here pushes air this way, it picks up the dust from the Sahara Desert and brings it out here. And then the African easterly jet went clear across the Atlantic to North America. Okay, so this was uh, an image from June 18th, 2020. And I'll show you this, what this looks like on Earth and Earth School. Okay, but one aspect of this that surprised the researchers was how this intense dust storm had little to no impact on the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season. Normally when you get this amount of dust generated, of course it blocks some of the sunlight, it cools the ocean in these regions, so it should mean that there's less tropical storms developing, but the oceans were so warm that the dust did not suppress it in, the 20, in, you know, in this 2020 hurricane season. So we had a record number of hurricanes still, in spite of all of this dust. We had, you know, in the 2020 hurricane season, we had 30 named storms from Arthur to Iota, you know, and that was a, a record. Okay, so, you know, there's a large body of evidence suggesting that the increased dust suspended over the Atlantic reduces the number of tropical cyclones because of the dust-induced cooling of the ocean surface temperature. And the ocean surface temperature has to be 26.5 degrees Celsius or higher to amplify storms. So we see the largest dust storm on record, and we also had one of the most active hurricane seasons on record. These things don't normally happen, so this is completely unexpected. This is completely new. And one of the comments from one of the scientists was either 2020 is just a year where everything's upside down or we really need to reevaluate our understanding of how dust impacts the climate system. Or I would argue that dust reduces, you know, cools the ocean. Obviously it's going to do that. So why did we have a record season? Well, either the dust was cooling the ocean in regions that didn't affect the, the hurricane so much Okay, that's not so likely. Or what I think happened is that the oceans were so warm to begin with, they were much, much, much higher temperatures than the 26 and a half. You know, a lot of the region was 30 Celsius. And if 30 cools down to 29 or 28 because of the dust, you're still going to, you're still over that threshold of 26.5 for amplification of hurricanes. So these are all the tracks of all the storms in the record setting 2020 Atlantic hurricane season. Okay, so we had 30 storms, we set a record, and that's in spite of all the dust being generated, crossing and cooling in the latter part of June. Okay, now the other part of this, the other thing that this study looks at is the source of the wave train pattern that sustains the subtropical high and the low. So these, are, these have to be sustained for a period of time in order to generate things, and they did that because the jet stream was stuck in place and slower, and the jet stream was marinely um, very amplified because of the loss of Arctic sea ice. Okay, so I think it's pretty clear. Um, but the, uh, you know, so, you know, you talk about the jet stream winds are known to result from the temperature difference between the tropics and the Arctic. The colder the Arctic is, the stronger the jet stream winds are because the Arctic's warming like crazy. The jet streams weaken, become more marinal and get blocked. Um, this is, this is, shouldn't be a controversial idea at this point, but in this uh, article and paper, they, they kind of hedged their bet. They said they can't draw specific conclusions, but they suggest that if a connection exists between the jets due to the Arctic and the dust storms, then we're going to see lots more of these dust storms in the years to come. And the Arctic sea ice cover was very low in June of 2020, at record lows, and this is when this occurred. Okay, so, you know, as we continue to get the, as climate change accelerates and this, this, these, uh, the Arctic warms even more and the jet streams become even more distorted, we can expect to see a lot more of these dust storms in the future. That's the, the gist of it. Okay, so that's the key conclusions. And I'm going to show, talk about another article here. Is Arctic warming behind a Munster Saharan dust storm? This is an article from the Scripps Institute of Oceanography. And it has pretty much the same information. Um, you know, it talks, it, I mean, here we go. We've got the high, we've got the low, we've got the African easterly jet. We've got, it picks up the dust and sends it out here. So I'll show you Earth Null School and I'll go to the source paper for the next video. Thank you for listening.